This is 7 News, the voice of the coast. Tonight, a man taken into custody after a six-hour standoff with police at Woolloomba. Council hits out after funding is scrapped for a major traffic pinch point. I'm Daniel Gibson. Later on this news hour, the RBA boss blames everyday Aussies for repeated rate hikes. And the hostage swap put off for days until Hamas signs off on the ceasefire. 7 News begins now. Good evening. A six-hour siege at a property in the small town of Wollongbar in the Northern Rivers has ended without injury. The police operation started early this morning and resulted in parts of the town being locked down. A highway closed, a TAFE in lockdown. Attention, attention, an emergency exists. Please follow the lockdown procedure. What started as a concern for welfare at a private property on the Bruxner Highway in Wollongbar just after 8am quickly escalated into a major police operation. Uh, the man was there alone. Uh, police, when they attended the property, made contact with the man and subsequently the operation unfolded. The highway closed between Sneets Road and McLean's Ridge Road. At Wollongbar TAFE, people forced to shelter in classrooms with doors and windows locked. You could hear the alarms going in the back the background, so we're just laying on the floor in one of the rooms, lights out, everything closed up. We thought it was a joke. And yeah, then a bunch of cops in right gear started showing up. You know, a few nerves, a bit wild. Turned all the power off and it all got pretty real pretty quick. Students and staff remained in lockdown until around 12.30 when evacuations began. After a relief, yeah. Yeah, it got to three hours and I think um, we are all pretty tired and hungry. While students were free to go, an emergency command centre remained in the TAFE's car park. Local police, assisted by Pole Air, police negotiators and the Tactical Operations Unit. At 2pm, a 45-year-old man was taken into custody. Reporter Claire Morton joins us live now from Ballina with the latest. And Claire, what more can you tell us? Maddie, the man has now been taken to Lismore Base Hospital under police guard. They say he remained at the Bruxner Highway property throughout the operation and was taken into custody by tactical operations officers without injury. It is understood the police have since been searching that residence. The Bruxner Highway is expected to remain closed for some time with diversions in place. We take precautions in jobs like this and one of the precautions was to evacuate local areas. Uh, just around that exclusion zone. And Police have thanked the community for their cooperation and understanding. Thanks, Claire. Claire Morton there reporting live for us tonight. Investigations are underway after a body was found in Kendall overnight. Samantha Crow has been at the crime scene today. And Sam, what more do we know? Well, Nick, there's very little information at this stage. What we do know is a 43-year-old man was found unresponsive at Batar Creek in Kendall just before 7 o'clock last night. Members of the public started CPR until paramedics arrived. However, he died at the scene. Police are now investigating the circumstances around that death. Anyone with any information has been asked to contact Crime Stoppers. OK, thanks for the update, Sam. That's Samantha Crow reporting live for us tonight. A controversial development south of Foster has been given the green light. There are mixed feelings in the beachside community, but developers hope to provide a positive experience for future residents. A contentious development for locals in Bluey's Beach. Ingenia Lifestyle's application for an over 55s development, which includes 133 long term homes and 13 short term sites, was approved in Lands and Environment Court this week. It's not a good thing for the area. We haven't got the infrastructure in the area. You're bringing in elderly people into an area where there's one medical service, one dentist, and there is a severe lack of infrastructure to support it. I'm not unhappy that, it, that it's accepted. Um, it was probably always going to go ahead. There's a lot of, but there's a lot of um, lots. It'd be good if there were fewer lots. I just hope they do a good job in. All the, all the civil works, that's all I care about, mostly care about. The application was deferred at Midcoast Council's October meeting, giving the New South Wales Lands and Environment Court the final decision on the application. That application was being assessed by the council and an appeal in the Land Environment Court was lodged by the developer uh, based around the council's failure to approve that 
application within a reasonable period of time. While the community may have conflicting opinions, Ingenia looks forward to commencing work soon. In a statement, Ingenia Community's Chief Executive Officer Simon Owen said that Ingenia looks forward to advancing their vision of the site, which will improve housing choice and diversity, as well as boost on-site community facilities. Hannah Hartup, 7 News. Port Macquarie Hastings Council has hit out at a federal government decision to cut funding allocated for the Wrights Road roundabout and surrounding roadways. It now means $4 million has been taken off the table. Traffic bumper to bumper and extended delays getting to schools, universities and the hospital. The Wrights Road roundabout is the region's number one congestion hotspot. It is pretty bad, very dangerous, yeah. Very busy, hard to get to work at time and they're extremely backed up. It needs to be fixed sooner rather than later. The infrastructure in Port Macquarie has not kept up with the development. Despite continued calls for a solution, the federal Labor government has withdrawn $4 million for planning as part of its infrastructure pipeline review. Today, Port Macquarie Hastings Council hit out at that decision. For them to say that there's no merit to this project is absolutely ridiculous. We know that if we don't reduce that congestion, if we don't do the planning, it's going to have an impact on our health and well-being, the safety of our community. The area is one of the fastest growing in the Port Macquarie Hastings LGA where population is expected to grow by an additional 14,000 people before 2041. As long as there's no plan in place for the Rides Road roundabout, land use planning for the health and education precinct is also significantly impacted. The economic impact for our community is going to be extensive. The Labor government absolutely needs to reconsider this. We received this statement from the Albanese government. The Australian government has made necessary decisions to no longer provide funding to some projects at this time. This includes projects that were not realistically going to be delivered with the funding available have made little to no progress over a significant amount of time and projects that do not align with Commonwealth or state and territory priorities. The state government says it's currently working on a strategic business case to be completed next year. Samantha Crow, 7 News. Record low global nut prices have hurt macadamia growers more than the years of drought, fire and flood. So they're buoyed by news their crop could be a fertility superfood. Macadamia nut yields have been good this season despite the dry winter, but a crash in global prices means many are harvesting at a loss. Really tough on the price. Um, the, some people had a, a reasonable crop, some didn't. Um, some haven't picked up because the price is so low. Next season shows early promise here in Vella. In good news for producers, scientists have found that nuts are good for your nuts, particularly boosting male fertility levels. Two handfuls a day should do it. It is easy to remember nuts are good for your nuts. That's a very good punchy line uh, that we could certainly use for uh, disseminating our study. The Monash University study gave walnuts, almonds and hazelnuts to healthy men. After three months consuming these two handfuls of nuts daily, the sperm quality of men improved significantly. Potential fertility superfood status is stimulating nut farmers. Very exciting for me, <laughs> personally. Um, we don't have kids and uh, I'm just hoping it's not too late and I can take advantage of it. But it may be premature, as macadamias are yet to be studied. We know that some of the nutrients that are present in nuts seem to be good for fertility. It's really noticeable that all, that all of the wildlife that eat the nuts are prolific breeders and, and the population just booms. Believe it or not, fertility in a nutshell. Claire Simmons, 7 News. New COVID-19 vaccinations which target common variants of the virus will be made available next month. It comes after advice from the Australian Technical Advisory Group on immunisations. Authorities warn only about a quarter of vulnerable Australians have had their 2023 booster shots. There are concerns that COVID cases could spike in the coming months. 
A Christmas toy drive is underway to make sure struggling families can celebrate Christmas this year. Coffs Harbour's Hoi Moe has joined forces with Lifehouse Care this festive season, encouraging locals to donate new gifts for kids in need. The Hoi Moe promising to double the number of local donations in the hope of spreading Christmas cheer. And that's something that we really wanted to drive home and, and acknowledge that people are doing it tough and we want to make sure we can, especially that time of year, help the kids and make them feel like they've got a, a bit of a, a Christmas. The gifts will be wrapped at Lifehouse in Coffs Harbour and distributed to mums and dads ready to put under the tree. Well, Kirsty joins us now with a look at today's weather. And Kirsty, it was a little bit rainy up and down the coast today. We did have some wet weather, Maddie and Nick. Hello to you both. And good evening, everyone. That rain leading to very humid conditions this morning. Once again, it felt warmer than our maximums, which did sit around the low to mid 20s. A mostly cloudy day with showers between Coffs Harbour and Evanshead this morning, and some isolated showers elsewhere. Nimboida recording 18 millimetres since 9 a.m. Seven millimetres at Grafton Airport fell between just 12 and 12.30. Some gusty winds too out of the south and the southeast. Coffs Harbour today reached 23 degrees, the same for Yamba and at the border for Queensland, 26 in Coolangatta. Remaining overcast tonight, a slight shower tomorrow, otherwise a partly cloudy Friday. I'll have the forecast shortly. Sounds good. Thanks, Kirsty. We'll see you soon. Still to come in seven years, a green sea turtle released back into the ocean after a recovery stint at SeaWorld. And a Coffs Harbour wildlife sanctuary to offer locals an annual pass. And a little later on this news hour, inflation now homegrown. Why the RBA boss has a haircut and a trip to the dentist is to blame. Delays for the exchange of Palestinian prisoners and Israeli hostages. And two people killed in an explosion after a car loses control of the US-Canada border. Welcome back. The rebirth of the Dolphin Marine Conservation Park from the financial woes of voluntary administration has led to changes. Now known as Coffs Coast Wildlife Sanctuary, new owners are focused on connecting locals to the park. Three weeks ago, these fairy penguins left their nesting burrows and are still noisily debating their new home preferences. It is also three weeks since Tigger and Brian Cross bought the park, giving ownership to Coffs Coast Wildlife Sanctuary, the now not-for-profit enterprise offering memberships. The membership is more about the community being involved in the rescue rehab stuff that we do. The new annual membership also gives access to daily animal encounters, like getting close to fairy penguin chicks and suggesting names. I think the penguins was very cute and fluffy. I think it was really small. I think the penguin's name should be Eli because it looks, it looks like a boy a bit and it looks like an Eli to me. We love coming here, seeing the dolphins, the seals, the turtles and, and much more. Yeah, we love it. Five turtles have been rescued this week and members can also be a part of their release. Anyone in the Coffs Council area uh, can buy a membership for $60, which includes entry to the sanctuary for a whole year and discounts on exclusive um, deals such as interactions and the Peckish Penguin Cafe as well. It's amazing. We love coming here. Um, for $60 for an annual pass is incredible. Locals can come in on Saturday, December 3rd, after 3pm, for free. <coughs> Claire Simmons, 7 News. A green sea turtle rescued from the Clarence Valley has been given a second chance at life. Verde was found by stand-up paddleboarders on the bank of the Sandon River in May. Underweight and covered in barnacles, she was found to be suffering from floating syndrome. But after seven months of rehabilitation at SeaWorld, she was released this morning at Lennox Head at a much healthier weight of 35 kilos. They already have a uh, very difficult life cycle, um, so yeah, what we can do is amazing to get them back out there. Another two turtles are expected to be released in the area in the coming weeks. An iconic Archibald Prize finalist portrait is moving to Bellingen Memorial Hall and it will be a perfect fit. Watercolour portrait artist Cherry Hood is an Archibald Prize winner and also painted concert pianist David Helcoft. Her portrait of the musician made famous in the movie Shine hung as a finalist in the 2009 prize. She offered the painting to be hung in the Bellingen Memorial Hall to honour Helvgott's connection to the town. 
Those of us that have been lucky enough to uh, be present when David has performed at Bellingen Memorial Hall, usually alongside the Bellingen Youth Orchestra, it's a wonderful connection that he has with the hall. Bellingen Shire Council formally accepted the generous donation yesterday. Up next in 7 News, four Great Lakes College tennis stars to battle the nation's best. And Port Macquarie teams tune up for next weekend's State Cup Carnival. Preparations are continuing ahead of next week's Senior Touch Football State Cup in Port Macquarie. The local teams hope their training has them primed to go deep in the tournament. One week out from the main event and Port Macquarie Touch Association is looking good for next weekend's Senior State Cup. Prep's going well. Um, we're taking seven sides this year to State Cup. Unfortunately, we couldn't quite get the second 20s team, but seven teams is good. Port Macquarie's senior mixed team played the grand final last year but lost. This year, the side is looking to go one better. They got a serious injury from one of the players last year and they made the grand final without him. So um, that's Bo Montgomery's back this year. So I think... Um, yeah, the goal is to be like definitely top four, hopefully on to the grand final again. The Mako's mixed opens and masters are also looking like they could be sides to beat. The association confident they too can make the finals. The whole three of the mixed teams have got a really good chance this year. I think they should definitely be in all the semi-finals. And once finals hit, yeah, who knows what could happen from there. Plus, there's plenty of young blood, both under-20s teams bringing in some of the top local juniors. Experience for young sides moving up the ranks. There's heaps of hard teams in there, but we just have to communicate with our team, see who's got who and just try what, we, what we've been doing at training and hopefully that just comes out in our performance in, on the days. The competition kicks off next Friday with thousands of people expected to flock to the region for the event. Samantha Crow, 7 News. Four tennis stars from the Manning Great Lakes region will head to Queensland this weekend. They will battle some of the nation's best players at the Gallipoli Youth Cup. Four Great Lakes college girls hitting the courts, gearing up to take on Australia's best. The girls will compete at the Gallipoli Youth Cup in Queensland this weekend, competing against nine other school teams. It's really amazing. Like, I think we were all so surprised at the magnitude of our achievements. Like, we just weren't expecting it at all. We went in as, like, the underdogs ultimately, so it was quite fun. This is the first time the school has qualified for the event, with the girls earning their place after winning the combined high school state title in Ulladulla. I think we're really putting regional areas on the map for tennis. Working hard, the girls aren't letting the weather slow them down. We've been training, like, a few times a week together. Like, we get together and practice our doubles and we all train separately as well with our coaches. With years of experience, they're ready to test themselves. I've been playing tennis since I was like two. My dad's a tennis coach here, so didn't really have a choice in that. While the nerves are kicking in. Pretty excited, a little bit nervous. Um, something that we've never done before, but so keen to go and give it a go. They're just excited to have the opportunity to play together. Whenever we go away to tournaments, we have so much fun together, and especially things like this, because tennis is quite an individual sport. So when we play as a team, it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Hannah Hartup, 7 News. Club Tweed has played host to a world record breaking game of lawn bowls. The attempt for the longest singles marathon by para athletes Serena Bennell and Ellen Faulkner ended at 8.40 last night after more than 33 hours of play. It knocked off the previous record of 32 hours and 34 minutes. The live stream event aimed to promote the sport's inclusivity. It is expected to be verified by Guinness World Records in the coming weeks. Up next in 7 News, Kirsty's back and she's got your all-important local weather forecast. That's next. Welcome back, everyone. Humidity has increased across New South Wales thanks to a high-pressure system directing warm, moisture-laden air in the state. Meanwhile, this trough is generating widespread showers and isolated thunderstorms. This pattern will continue for the end of the week and through the weekend ahead. Now, fairly decent rainfall totals are on the forecast for many. Localised areas could see more than 100 millimetres of rain. Of course, those rainfall totals could increase our risk of flash flooding. Across our coastline, we 
we could see anywhere between about 30 and 60 millimetres over the coming eight days. It is Friday tomorrow though, so let's see what's in store along the coast and we are expecting some scattered cloud with a slight chance of showers for inland regions, but we're really not expecting any more than just one or two millimetres tomorrow. Temperatures in at the 20s, the mid 20s under partly cloudy skies for Casino. Much the same for Evans Head with an east to northeasterly wind. Leesmore 25 and Yamba expecting the same. On the waters tomorrow, winds around 15 knots for Byron Bay, increasing to 20 knots out of the northeast for Coffs Harbour. A southerly swell at around three to five feet. Excuse me, with our sea heights up at about one and a half metres. Taking a look to our weekend forecast now, Saturday mostly cloudy along the coast. There is also the chance of some isolated storms around and about a medium chance of coastal showers. Winds picking up during the day, northeasterlies increasing to around 30 kilometres an hour with even stronger wind gusts. Remaining partly cloudy at Byron Bay, a mild evening, 20 degrees and increasing to a maximum of 24. Grafton, grey skies and a top of 29. Into Sunday, some of that cloud will dissipate to a partly cloudy day, but as we can see, that chance of showers increasing. There's about a 40% chance of one to two millimetres with storms around, but temperatures are also on the rise, the high 20s and low 30s. We're expecting our humidity to increase too. Heavier rainfall then on the forecast early to mid next week, but just a few showers over the coming few days. A little bit of rain about Kirsty. Yeah, that's right. Thanks so much. That's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for watching. You can catch up on our website or, of course, at 7+. Plus. Right now, Dan's got your national news. Enjoy your night and we'll see you tomorrow at 6 o'clock.